Yes, I'm coming back on, and this is the second day in a row that I'm kind of talking about this, I mean, all these emotions that are coming up in my work. I'm Janet Trevino, I live in San Antonio, Texas, and I am your cuddlist here in San Antonio. And yes, yeah, so attachment, uh, beginning too attached. I'm finding that a lot of people are coming, having these feelings as they meet me, um, wanting to like latch on to me <laughs> or, or just really struggling with, okay, um, I feel these feelings and I'm uncomfortable and I need to back away, right? I need to stop seeing you. It's too overwhelming. So I want to go through kind of what I've been um, talking with people about. I've, I've had the opportunity to talk with people that have experienced this. Um, talking to the, a direct, the director of training of Cuddle Party and talk to him one-on-one -on -one today about it as well. So before I get into what those stories have to show us, I would like to tell you a little bit about the brain. So the brain has three big parts to deal with love. And Helen Fisher, which I think she's a neuroscientist, and she's a brilliant person out there, did a TED talk around the brain and love. And that these three parts basically are lust, uh, romance, and attachment. And hi everyone that's saying hello. Hi, Rocky and Michael. Hey, Carrie. <laughs> So lust and romance and attachment are these three different parts of the brain. So it is possible to be in love with someone and romantic, have lust for someone else, and then also have attachments, right? Like these are parts of the brain that are completely different and working at the same time. So often um, someone will come to me and then session is really intense because they, they attach really quickly to me. And then they also bring in another part like the romance or maybe lust. And so like the brain is doing a lot of different things at once. And it's possible to start to separate those. I mean, I don't know who does that. Maybe you go to a therapist to figure that part out. But I know that it's three different parts of the brain. And again, Helen Fisher does amazing research on this and she has a few books about it. So go and find her for more information around that. So when you take that though, so when I explained to a person today about their three different parts, it helped open his mind to, wow, I can actually attach have an attached relationship with people and also have a romantic with other people like this is something that's separate and then have like a sexual thing over here I'm like it is possible it's not easy but it's possible so in that context that information I'm gonna put that aside then we have people who um, attachment styles so some of you out there who are listening know way more about this than I do but I'll do my best to just kind of go through what I'm seeing as insecure attachment so there's three different well Three different types of attachment styles in adults. Um, again, those who know this, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna botch this, but there's secure attachment, there is insecure, and then there's avoidant attachment. And I'm going to quickly show you. Down, down, down. Oops, if you can see it. Um, instead of trying to figure this out on my own, I'm gonna have you read it. Oh no, my computer is going to stop. The one I want to look at is insecure attachment, which says, the quote is, I want to be completely emotionally intimate with others, but I often find that others are reluctant to get as close as I would like, and I'm uncom am uncomfortable being without close relationships, but I sometimes worry that others don't value me as much as I value them. All right, so anyway, oops. To me, I guess. Haha. -ha. all right, and my little thing fell. So let me put this back up here. So what I found, is that there are lots of people out there who walk around looking for other people to um, have intimate relationships with, but they never get enough. They're always wanting more. They're always wanting more intimacy, wanting approval, wanting recognition. They find that like, I love these people, but they don't love me back. Like it's, it's not matching, right? Um, and so, okay, so those are the things, the two things I'm seeing that's happening. Um, so now I'm gonna take you to Cuddle Party. So again, giving you pieces, Hopefully we'll put this all together in a story. Um, Brooke and I, Brooke is one of the people that's come to the cuddle party here in San Antonio. And we've been talking about um, some of his own issues in relationships. So he came to the cuddle party, like really enthusiastic, like, wow, this is an opportunity for me to practice asking for what I want and figuring out like how to manage um, relationships with women. And what I, what he experienced, which he sent me a message a few days ago saying, I can't come back to cuddle party. Um, it's overwhelming. I have all these feelings. And if I, quick break, I did ask Brooke's permission to talk about this story. So in case you're like, anyway, yes, I did. So it's, he's, yeah, he said it's okay. Um, he said, I can't go back to cuddle party because I get emotionally attached to the people that are there that I cuddle with. And I want something more. I want to, I want relationship. I want to experience the fullness of people and I want more. 
So first I just basically was like, hey, um, thanks for being honest and I wish you the best and you know, kind of just like, okay, goodbye. Like I didn't, you know, I, I wanted to say something but I didn't know what to say. And so then today I talked to the director of uh, Cuddle Party, which is Len Daly, and I shared with him this story and I said, kind of, I'd like for us to explore this a little bit because I want to figure out what what I could say. I mean, I, I understand like if people don't want to come back, that's cool, like either for a one-on-one -on -one session with me or Cuddle Party, like I want to respect that, but I want to be able to address what I think may be happening. And Len, as we were talking, he said some important things, which I will get to here. My notes. Ah, okay. So in our society, we find this possessiveness, right, that exists. This idea of like we pair off. So we go into a group setting, we pair off with someone, like make the connection. Right. We're always looking for our partner in the world, and that practice usually brings a lot of hurt and harm to ourselves. Um, because we just go from one person to the other, we're always looking to latch, especially for those who have an insecure attachment. And so goes, he said, the way to free yourself from that, from that need to pair off is to practice something different. Right? Practice, which is cuddle party, right? And he said, a Dalai Lama quote that was, practice what you want to keep. So then I got the courage, I messaged Brooke and I said, hey, can we talk a little bit more and flesh out kind of your thing about like not wanting to come back to cuddle party? Like, can we talk about it some more? And I, and I didn't want to presume that I knew it was best for him and I didn't want him to feel like um, I was kind of giving him advice. Like I just wanted to honor where he was at but I also wanted to ask a few questions and really ask permission if it was okay for me to learn through this experience. And um, I asked him, the first question I said, is it working for you to do this? Is it working for you to go one by one in relationships? Is it working for you to find someone, make that connection, say, oh, this might work, and then give your whole heart to it, and then realize that person isn't responding, and be heartbroken, and then go find someone else? And I, honestly, I thought for a second he might say, yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, you know what he said? He said, no. No, it's not working. I'm not happy with doing that. And of course, there's like, well, if I'm dating a few different people, you know, what about their feelings if they find out I'm with someone else? So of course, there's a lot of, again, layers of um, emotions there that, again, I'm not a therapist, so I don't presume to like go into the depth of that. Um, but there, I said, you know, here's Cuddle Party. It's an opportunity for you to be in a group of people Yes, and you do kind of gravitate to one person and you hold on to them and say, I'm not going to let you go, kind of thing. But what if, what if we paused and had you try something brand new? And it was like, what if you just put a timer that you would not cuddle with anyone more than 10 minutes, seven minutes, whatever it is. And like you made yourself get up and ask someone else to do something with. What if you practiced connecting with a bunch of different people? to break that again and then just see what just comes up for you again. I don't know what's gonna come up, but just see maybe you may find learn things about yourself that you didn't know and then potentially go to a therapist to kind of explore more of that or just again, try something different because obviously what you've been doing hasn't been working. So now moving on to the next card. Um, so then that got me thinking about my work in Cuddleist and finding that my clients fall under like the Brooke syndrome. Can I call it a syndrome? I'm so sorry, Brooke, <laughs> that's offensive. Like fall under like the same thing where they meet me, they love the experience with me, they, they connect so well, they feel so affirmed and then realize, oh shit, I'm leaving. Like our session ends and I go home and I want more and I have these feelings and I'm conflicted and I, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. And, I still don't have the right answers for how to handle that exactly, or not even, it's not my job to handle, but like how to move in this world where they're connecting that way. So I have, I have a few options and ideas. Um, I thought of like a smaller cuddle session. I would love to see groups of like three or four people, maybe five that would be willing to have a cuddle session, reduced rate of course, and us practice giving and receiving touch in a smaller group. And it would look like a, you know, cuddleist thing, not so much cuddle party, but where we could begin to, to make the connections with a few different people. So in my, you know, fantasy world, cuddleist is also working at doing that kind of work for those who, again, have that 
insecure attachment, they could learn how to attach and, and get to learn different people and practice their asking for what they want skills. So that's my first idea. That was actually brought up by, by Len. Um, and I've been thinking about working with couples, but hadn't figured out like what would be the purpose or reason for doing smaller groups, but that might be one. And the other thing was I had a client today that I asked him about this because you know we talk a lot about the work and he said that one of the things that he did was he controlled his growth in this work. Now he might be the client that I probably will see for the, the longest um, because from the beginning, the, our first session, he reminded me, because you remember what we did in our first session? I said, no, remind me. Uh, he said, we held hands. That's all I wanted to do. I knew I could move forward really quickly and I knew that I could jump right into that full body experience, but I chose not to. And what I, what I asked for was, can we just hold hands and go really slow? And he regulated his emotions. Like he knew himself well enough that he knew, let's go, let's go really slow, let's take it easy and get to know each other. And, and as we were talking about it, he never told me this before, but he has a healthy um, connection with me. I don't know the word, like he, he allows me to like be who I am and he is who he is and he comes and he goes and he knows that our time is our time and that's it that's that's the time we have together and it's really amazing he says if, even if he gets a girlfriend or he has a wife one day he'll make it really clear kind of sooner than later that he sees me see or sees a cuddleist and that he's gonna continue even through his relationships also it was kind of cute he said that he probably will contact other cuddleists and you know so he'll cheat on me whatever it's fine <laughs> cheat on me go see other cuddleists you know go and have this amazing experience with other people it's not so much about me it's about his personal growth and him also being truly controlling that growth so yay that's kind of where I'm at today with this topic it's been not been easy I got another text message um, probably about three days ago saying I can't see you anymore because I'm getting having feelings for you it's a real thing and um, still not sure again if and when to address this but this video is out there and hopefully we'll be able to, to support more people in getting the touch that they need, but also working through all that brain stuff. So, love you all. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.